All right, I want to give you some practice with dividing fractions and multiplying fractions using Cuisinier rods. If you go to mathplayground.com, you can find this interactive here. Or if you just go to Google and search for um, Cuisinier rods interactive, this should be one of your first choices here. What we're looking at, we've got our grid, so it's kind of limited on the space, how wide it is. So just keep that in mind as you're selecting which Cuisinier rods to use. You can turn on and off the numbers just by clicking on this 257 right here. For today's activity, I'm mainly going to leave it off because we're not actually looking at the value. We're just determining what's a whole and then what's a fraction of that whole. You can also turn off the grid lines if you want to, but we're going to leave those up because I think they're helpful. And if you get a bunch of stuff out here and you're ready to clear it out, you can hit this to clear it out. Or if you've got just one piece out and you want to get rid of it, you can drag it down to this piece right here that looks kind of like a cat and it will take it off. All right. The first thing I want to talk about is one half times three. How can we represent that using Cuisinier rods? Now we talked about it a little bit in class and some of the confusion here was always, you know, what length should I start off with representing one whole? And so if I'm going to take one half of something, I wouldn't use something like the seven rod here that's seven units long because with Cuisinier rods, we, we only have um, integers here. We don't have rationals as far as we don't have 3.5 or any length to represent that. So the odd numbers I'm going to stay away from because I know I'm multiplying by one half. So I'm not going to use that. And obviously I'm not going to use, um, well, I guess you could use the two in this case because it works out but sometimes I like to stick with something a little bit larger to represent one whole so let's get rid of that I actually chose um, well let's look at 10 when I first worked out this problem I said let me start with 10 um, if this orange rod right here is one whole then we're doing remember one half times three so three units long that's two and then I run into the issue that I was talking about a second ago where this grid isn't quite wide enough here. So I want something a little bit smaller than that because I've got three holes here. I'm going to use the five rod, which is yellow. And I'm going to let this represent one hole. Like I said, there's a couple different ways you can represent it. But if that's one hole, then that equals three. One, two, three. Now, we want to take one half of that. So what does one half of this look like? Well, I believe, let's try the black bar here. If that's one half, then two of them should fit in there evenly. Uh, we're following up one short here, so that's not going to work. Uh, brown bar notice the brown bar the next one up is too long so really you know this is sometimes you got to play around with it a little bit I need a number notice this is how many units long it's 15 units long once again we can't do like seven and a half so yellow was was a bad choice um, I want something that's an even number um, when I multiply it by three so sometimes you do got to play around a little bit or you could think hey um, I need something when it's multiplied by three it's also still an even number. So basically you could say whatever the unit is, it has to be multiplied by three and two, or you could say a multiple of three and two, which we talked about multiples, is, so we want a multiple of six. So we have 12, we have six, um, we have 18, any of those would work. Let me clear this out. So yellow didn't work for me. Yellow is the equivalent of five units long. Let's try a green one. So if I let a green be a whole, If green is one hole, then three greens is three holes. And I want to take half of that now. And so half of that, let's try the brown bar this time, see if that works. Uh, it's falling up one short, isn't it? So let's take those off. Let's go up to the blue bar here. And there we go. So 
blue will go into that evenly. So remember, we're not actually counting the values and saying, hey, this thing is um, 6 long, so this is 18 long, so I need a 9 and a 9. And then we're going to talk about what is a blue bar compared to the green here. The main thing is we're defining what a hole is, and then we've got three of those. And then we've got to be able to take half of that. So that's what I'm searching for here. Um, had I used a smaller one, like if I let a red be a hole, then this is 2, and then this becomes 3. And then notice this bright green is exactly half of it. So we could have used that as well. So either one works as a representation. So if I asked you this on a quiz, that's what I'm looking for. You define one hole, and so you might want to mark on here like, hey, a red or two units here is one hole. So this is three, and therefore a bright green is half of that. So remember the problem we're saying one half times three. So this is three. I want to know what is this one half the equivalent to in terms of the green bar there, our one hole. So I like to go through and say, um, how can we divide this up? You know, in terms of green bars, I've got at least one green bar. And this looks like half a green bar here. But just to verify, let's divide up that green bar into halves. So the bright green right here is going to be, there's half of a dark green. And so that's one hole. And then if we go one more over, notice how we have three halves equal to a blue bar here. So three halves is half of three holes. Or you could say it's one green or one dark green or one hole and one half. So three halves or one and one half. We can use the same down here with this representation. So what is, if, if red is one hole, we've got three holes. And this bright, bright green represents half of three holes. So if we look at our white pieces, each white piece is half of a red, or half of a hole. And so when we're comparing this to our bright green, how many halves do I have? I've got one, two, three halves. Three halves is going to be equal to half of three. All right. You can also switch this around, so if we look at this right here, if I say instead, let's take 3 times a half. Remember, multiplication is commutative, so we can multiply either way here. And this way actually works out to be a little bit easier, I think. So let's represent that. So I'm just going to see we have dark green. Let's clear this out. I think it's a little bit easier to clear it out. Once again, we're going to let dark green equal a whole. So what's a half? A half is going to be bright green. Just notice two of these will go into the dark green evenly. So if bright green is a half, and I got three of them, just line those up, there's three. How many halves do I have here? I have three halves. Or I have one plus a half. One and a half is the equivalent to three halves. So the next thing I want you to do is try doing a fraction times a fraction. So let's do one-third times two-fifths. So with doing one-third times two-fifths, what I want to make as far as, you know, the question is what should I choose for a fifth or a third or something like that? I prefer to make my fifths something divisible by three because I know I'm taking one-third of it. So, for instance, if I let this bright green equal one-fifth, then I know a third of one-fifth is just going to be one of these blocks because we can say this goes in one, two, three. So a third right here is going to be a third of a fifth is equal to one of those blocks. But it's not enough just to do that. I need to know what one whole is. So if each bright green block is a fifth, that's two-fifths, that's three-fifths, that's four-fifths, and that's five-fifths, or one whole. So when I'm looking at this, I want to do a third of two of these. But 
how much is each one block worth? Well, I've got 15 of those blocks. If we were to line them up, they're 15. So each little white, white block there is a 15th. So I'm going to do one third of two fifths. So put out two fifths and divide it up into thirds. So when I divide it into thirds, this is what I have. Each red block is a third of two fifths. And so if we break this down into how many white blocks it equals, it equals two of them. So if we notice how many white blocks are in a hole, we have 15 of them. It takes a little while to drag them all out. You don't really have to do that, but if you don't believe me, you can count them out or you can count out the spaces there. So there are 15 white blocks. Each white block is 1 15th. And so we want a red block right here. How many white blocks is that? It's going to be two of those white blocks or 2 15ths. So you can say, hey, there are 15 white blocks in a hole. So each white block is 1 15th. That makes 2 15ths. You could also say how many red blocks there are. There should be, actually, there's not going to be an even number. So you can't really use that. Um, but yeah, I would just break it down to the white blocks. You know, you've got 15 of them. So there's going to be 2 15ths there. So that works also with the algorithm way. Um, if we say 1 times 2, you get a 2 up here. So there's 2, and 3 times 5 is 15, and so you get 2 over 15. Now we should be able to reverse that and say, okay, what if we did 2 fifths times 1 third? So what's that look like? Remember, multiplication is commutative. Whoops, not that. 2 fifths times 1 third third. How can we represent that? Well, I'd like whatever a third is to be divisible by 5. That would make it easy, easier for me. So let's clear this out. Let's pick a number that's divisible by 5, like a yellow block. And so if this is a third, what is a whole? 1, 2, 3. So 3 thirds equals a whole. So once again, we get our whole equal to 15 units long. But I want, what are we doing here? We want 2 fifths of 1 third. So take 1 third. This is representing 1 third here. And I want to divide it up into fifths. I'll do that with just the white blocks because 5 of them fit in there. And we want two-fifths out of here. So two-fifths of that is just going to be two blocks. And so it's two-fifths of the third, but in the grand scheme of things, you've got 15 of those white blocks up here. And so each white block is one-fifteenth of the whole. So two-fifths of the third is the equivalent of two-fifteenths of the whole. All right, so that's a little bit of practice there with multiplying fractions with Cuisinier rods. If you have questions, be sure to ask me in class. Um, we'll do division in a different video just because I don't want to make these videos too long. So that's multiplying fractions.